Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. It's Monet here and today y'all I have a very transparent video. Maybe the most transparent video I have made to date or will make. Obviously I like to be transparent with you guys and I'm going to be sharing my journey before Christ. Before I really dedicated my life to Christ and as a single girl and I also believe that this has been a long time coming. I really believe that God has led me to share this with you guys. Most of my journey through my life I have shared because I know that someone out there could use this. I know that God is always leading me to share his goodness, to share his glory. And so I want to talk about my life before Christ. But first, if you are new here, welcome onto my channel. My name is Monet McDaniel. And here I make faith, family, and lifestyle videos from parenting to motherhood to family vlogs to faith-based content and just my journey with God, my journey as a mom and as a, a young wife so if you have been subscribed from the beginning thank you for rocking with me this long I am as you guys know a young wife I got married at 19 and it'll be six years this year 2021 in December that I've been married to my husband and I'm currently baking baby number three so I'm so excited about that and we also have two kids I have a five a Gia she'll be five this year and my son who just turned three and so now I am a young wife a young mom I'm living for Christ and I'm talking about Jesus but I also wanted to let you guys know that there was a time where I wasn't fully living for Christ and there wasn't there was a time where I wasn't dedicating my life to Christ there was a time where I was lost there was a time where I felt low there was a time where I didn't know my worth there was a time where I was fully knee deep in sin <laughs> so I thank God I am where I am today but I want to share that with y'all maybe if you're on the same path maybe if you're a young single girl feeling lost not knowing her worth not really knowing who God is or if you're just feeling like does God still love me where I am here's my story if you know me then guys you know I was raised in the church along with my two sisters and my one brother who lived in the same household with me we were raised in church brought up in the church like heavily involved in the church and I mean like we were there every Sunday we led praise and worship we did Easter recitations we were doing children's church sermons like we would go to every like e every event at the church so even though my parents were young they made sure we were in church and even though they had their separate um marriage life and things that they were dealing with they still made sure that they instilled god in each and every one of us especially my dad he made sure that we knew who god was so i commend them for raising us in god and letting us know who he was even though that they were young and i can say like now being a young wife and a young parent that it is definitely hard you know raising kids and morals and values in today's society so I definitely commend them and I'm so grateful to God that they kept us in church but I also want to say just like a lot of children in church who are raised in the church and that's all they know sometimes we don't really get to know God for ourselves like we just you know because our parents have made us go from a young age we don't really develop a relationship with Christ as we should or know him for ourselves and so this was the case with me even though I was going to church even though I was raised in church I knew right from wrong I knew what were you know considered sins I knew all this information like I knew the bible verses but I didn't really know who God was for myself I knew that I would felt conviction or I would kind of hear God sometimes based on you know just the word of God and what I had learned but I didn't really know God I wasn't really pursuing a relationship with him I was just this is just what we were taught or this is just how we were brought up and so that was my story and so also my parents um being young experiencing the you know the pressures of everyday life and things that they had been through you know dealing with whatever they may have dealt with or it began to affect me much more than I knew so in elementary school you know, I was learning all these things. I was still, you know, getting good grades. But by the time I got to middle school, a lot had happened. 
just the pressures of peer pressure beginning to experience that in middle school beginning to feel the pressure of my parents as young adults you know having their own separate things to deal with in marriage it did affect the household much more than I realized and by the time I got to middle school also one th a big thing that impacted me was I was molested by the well elementary going into middle school I was molested and that's definitely a different video that I will talk about at a later date for those who are survivors and who want to know how to heal and get past and everything like that I will definitely be making a video on that but that affected me so by the time I got to middle school I was dealing with guilt I was dealing with shame I was dealing with depression at a very young age suicidal thoughts I was dealing with same-sex attraction beginning to have this struggle all these mental struggles beginning to you know think about what my what my parents were dealing with and taking that um, on as well and so it was very hard to focus on my grades it was very hard to focus on trying to live how they told us to live in church as children trying not to sin even though that doorway had been open for me um, trying to live right, trying to have joy and trying to believe that God would heal me if I was sad or heal me if, you know, I was heartbroken. Trying to, trying to live that Christian life, trying to believe all these things, but still experiencing feelings and things that were contrary to what I was told that a believer should be or should be experiencing or a believer should feel like this. Like I wasn't feeling like that. In middle school and my grades began to drop, I began to have outbursts in class. I remember starting to get put out of class um, for having angry outbursts. I would cry a lot in class. My teachers didn't know what was wrong. And I'm pretty sure it was hard for my parents to kind of know what was wrong with me at the time. And so I would just start doing bad in school. Even though I had the potential to be great, like I won, I, will, I won the spelling bee one year, I won a talent contest one year, I had potential. I knew that I could be great when I put effort forth I would get A's but I didn't really have the energy I didn't really have that joy I didn't really have that passion for learning in school because I was dealing with the guilt and shame of being molested in this huge secret I was dealing with depression I was dealing with low self-esteem feeling like everyone around me fit in like I didn't fit in because I'm a church girl also felt ugly compared to a lot of my peers or a lot of the girls in my grades and so I was struggling with so much mentally that by the time I got to seventh and eighth grade I was barely passing I think I went to summer school like two to three years in a row and so by the time I had got to eighth grade I had experienced a lot. I'm still struggling with same-sex attraction. I'm still struggling with not, I'm getting F's, I'm getting D's, I'm having outbursts. I'm just totally somebody who I should not be, <laughs> like, or who I knew I wasn't. Just, just trying to be cool, trying to like, you know, also block out the pain, block out the hurt of everything that was happening in my life. And so I wasn't focusing on school. And so I barely passed into high school. And so by the time I got to high school in ninth grade, I was still dealing with all these things that I was dealing with, but it was kind of amplified because now y'all know when we, when you get to high school, it's like this pressure to fit in. It's this pressure to have a, a, a group of friends. It's this pressure to be known and to be popular. And so me and my, my older sister were a year apart. And so I also felt like she set the standard for me to come in in high school. She was very well known. And so there was a pressure of living up to this expectation or being known or, you know, just all the peer pressure from the culture, the high school culture, the culture of, you know, the music that we were listening to was so much pressure to fit in. And so I was struggling so bad with self-image. I was still going to church because our parents still did make us go to church. So we were going to church, but it was like I wasn't really grasping or taking hold of faith or um, I knew who God was, but I wasn't really living it. I just was like, well, God, I'm kind of I was doubting God because of everything that I had, I had been through. I didn't want to really communicate with God. I just wanted to deal with life how I wanted to deal with it I thought I wouldn't have friends if I really fully committed like I would talk about God sometimes or I would you know kind of live that life a little bit but I didn't want to fully surrender or submit because one I don't know who God I don't really know who you are I just know what I learned about you I know that I hear your voice sometimes I feel like it may be you 
and for two it's like I don't want to be viewed as weird or lame or the Jesus freak or somebody who talked about God a lot so it still came out anyway <laughs> if, if you know if you are like dedicated to Christ or if you were raised in the church you know that eventually it comes out in your speech or it comes out when you're having a conversation with your friends or like about faith like it will come out sometimes and my friends would just be like oh okay and they would just kind of like look at me strange like wasn't you just cussing yesterday but now you telling me about faith today or wasn't you just doing this yesterday girl wasn't you just but now you talking to me about God and like you giving me a scripture so it was still like not being able to fit in in high school and so I thought that if I dyed my hair and I started losing a lot of weight, I was working out and everything, but I still felt ugly. I still struggled with self-esteem, not knowing who I was, placing my worth in friendships and um, how many guys liked me or thought I was cute. And, I, st you know, social media became a big thing. And so I started getting on social media. I would take pictures and, you know, just on social media, being somebody who I wasn't on social media and in real life, having this internal struggle with God, pull, I knew it was God pulling at my heartstrings. <sighs> Sorry. Like he still wanted me. God still wanted me. And he loved me. And he was still calling my name and loving on me. Even when I rejected him, even when I didn't want to live for him, even when I was doubting him, even when I was living a totally different lifestyle, even when I was sinning, even when I was, you know, living this double life, God still wanted me. He still at times would find a way to, I know it was God, love on me. God will still find a way to show me mercy in times where I knew that I should have been punished, in times where I knew that. I was giving grace. God was still giving me grace. And so I always had that inside of me. It never left me. And so it would come out, you know, when I'm with my friends and they would just still <laughs> kind of look at me sideways like, okay. And so I was still dealing with suicide and everything. But my 10th grade year in high school, I remember struggling so much and struggling so bad. And so our parents had went to a church called Merciful Ministries and this church taught on deliverance. And so I began to have a little bit of freedom. I began to learn about deliverance, really learn about who God was, how he operated. And I began to be set free a little bit. I began to pray a little bit more and I began to grow my relationship with God around this 10th grade year. But there were still internal struggles that I had, still peer pressure that I had, you know, trying to fit in and everything. And so... It never, even though I experienced a little bit of freedom and a little bit more of God, there was still this pull towards the world or this internal struggle still dealing with things that I had not dealt with fully from being molested from all these things in my childhood. And so it still affected me in the way where I didn't walk fully for God. I was still one foot in the world, one foot in the church. One foot with God, one foot with man, trying to impress and live for man. And so I was also dating. I had a boyfriend for from ninth grade to 12th grade, but I also began to place my value in how many guys like me. And there was a guy um, that I saw in my senior year. And so I began to place my value in a relationship or this kind of situation with this guy because he liked me and because he was popular. I thought that made me like... I must be worth something if this person is talking to me we tend to as young adults place those kind of our value and our worth in our relationships or who's how many people are liking us how we're accepted how we're viewed and so I place my relationship on um, my worth on that relationship and so 11th and 12th grade as an upperclassman I also begin to go to college parties and experience drinking even underage I was um gone with some peers I was going with peers to these college parties and I began to experience that freedom and that life what seemed like freedom which is really a path to death and misery there was nothing on the other side of it but at the time it just looked so fun it looks like freedom it looks like everybody's enjoying their self or sure of their self everybody knows who they are in college and which is far from the case or far from the truth that I know now but seeing that in high school and opening that door for drinking and for partying and for all this freedom I began to develop an appetite that was also contrary to 
living for God, that just wanted to party, that just wanted to be who you want to be, or just, just do what you wanted to do. And so one of the things that I had held near and dear to me that was still part of my core beliefs or my values was staying pure and not having sex before marriage. But obviously, if I'm open in this doorway, if I'm going to these parties, you know, if I'm starting to get, I would get, you know, closer um, in my relationships with men and I was starting to feel like so valued and like if you know so loved by men that obviously it's going to be hard to keep that and so I ended up having sex my, in my senior year this is one of the things that I really felt like was also a pivotal point for me and I know it may seem insignificant to some I believe that everything that happens God knows it's going to happen so I believe this was a pivotal point for me because this is one thing the last thing I, I held on to the last thing that gave me worth or I felt like was a part of me like made me who I was is because everybody around me was having sex and even though I wanted to fit in that's just something I wasn't going to do it made me better than well, we know that doesn't make you better than the person next door but in my head this was the only thing because I had such low self-esteem this is what I valued and I know that there is value in purity and waiting and value in sex between spouses but this is just I just placed all of my value and all of my worth into you know having this purity so I just felt so like I had nothing left because my boyfriend that I was with at the time we did ended up breaking that relationship up at the end of high school because I had been with this other guy who I mean, honestly, there were red flags that this guy wasn't really into me. You know, there were red flags that I would ignore because of um, who people thought this guy was or because he was popular. So I would esteem that ignoring the red flags, ignoring that this guy really didn't want to be with me or maybe he wanted to use me. And so I didn't really care at the time. And so obviously I started having expectations from this relationship like maybe we'll start a relationship or maybe we'll be boyfriend and girlfriend when honestly it was just a situationship like y'all know like if you've ever been in that situation you'll ask like well what are we or what are we going to establish something it was one of those things and so when it didn't end up happening and when it di didn't come to like what I thought it would come to like a real relationship I was so depressed I felt used I felt like I had no worth left. I felt like, well, maybe I wasn't good enough because this person didn't want to continue talking to me. And after graduation, I began to see inconsistencies in this relationship and just there were gaps of period of time where I would talk to this guy and then he would ghost me and things like that. If you've ever been in one of those situationships or there would be some excuse. And so I allowed that for a short period of time, just like, oh, well, maybe this person is, you know, you do, we just make these excuses up in our head even though we know what the situation is because I felt like I had placed everything I had now on this relationship that I had give everything to had given my physical body to and so you know I would notice these inconsistencies but still trying to believe that there was something there and there wasn't and so the last time I was ghosted I fell into one of the deepest depressions of my life. I was trying to prepare for college, but going through that deep depression of now having that relationship snatched away from me that I placed so much value in, now feeling worthless, feeling like, well, maybe I wasn't good enough, maybe I wasn't pretty enough, you know, do guys really like me, and that I was used, that I felt like I gave my purity away to somebody who didn't even halfway like me. You know, all these things are rushing through my head, and so I fell into one of the deepest depressions that I've ever experienced in my life. And so to try to counteract that, my my way of counteracting that was indulging in more parties, and then I started drinking, and so going into college, this was like, I want to say an every weekend thing and I wasn't even 21 yet but I began to drink I began to smoke I began to have um, marijuana edibles and this is things that I had previously experienced in high school like I told you guys I had begun to open that door but now it was every weekend and it was for not for the reason of fun but for the reason of trying to water down the hurt trying to just push back the pain and you know going out with my friends trying to find other guys to give me my worth give me my value and at this point in time I wasn't you know because I'm in college my I don't think my parents were making me go to church like we would go to church sometimes but at this point in time my personal relationship with God was like I didn't really have one I, I started to lose my conviction I was just like living because I was now I'm angry at God it's like 
you know, why would you allow somebody to hurt me so bad? And not just this guy, but God in my life. Like I didn't know who he was. I didn't see his hand like I see it now. I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand the path that I was taking and a lot of things that I didn't even mention that happened. Like so many things I felt angry about and I just kind of was just like, you know what? I don't care at this point. If I got to drink to not feel it, I'm going to drink. If I got to smoke to not feel it, I'm going to smoke. And so there began this cycle and this lifestyle of sin, of drinking, and sometimes still going to church hungover, like, you know, because you still go to church, because you still want to make make it seem like you're good, or still want to make sure, like, nobody know what you're doing. And so my cover-up sometimes would be to go to church, even though I'm pretty sure my dad, he's very prophetic, and I'm pretty sure that God would show him some things I'm pretty sure he knew something was going on with his his kid and but I was still trying to make it seem like you know I'm just it's okay I'm still living for God when I really wasn't it was no struggle for me it was no struggle for me to go out and sin and so I'm feeling lost I'm just drinking I would get two y'all I would get two pints of Hennessy every weekend I would you know I had the number like the the weed man I had his uh, number saved in my phone and I would text him for edibles and so this was a lifestyle for me this was like depression for me it and then the thing is we think that drinking and smoking will give us um some relief it only gives you a temporary high but you have to come back down you have to face reality after that high wears off or after that buzz wears off you have to now come back to okay this is my life it's only temporary and it leads to so much destruction and you're even more depressed after you do it like <laughs> you would be i would be more so much more depressed and it wasn't working it was just a pattern that keeps your you it gets your brain high for a minute so now you have to seek the next high and that's also how a lot of people get on drugs. But that was my story of, you know, I also was abusing um, pain medication. I would get certain pills and pain medications and just pop them. Like if I knew somebody, you know, that had pills, I would abuse them trying to get that high. And I thank God that he never let me go beyond that because I believe there was a grace. God was still gracing me even in my sin. Y'all, God was amazing to me at this time. After, you know, a few months of partying, this young man contacted me and I didn't want to feel the pain of rejection no more. And that's when I broke down. When he contacted me, I'm like, and I knew that he was coming around to probably use me or keep me around. And so I broke down after all the partying, after all the drinking, after it began to wear on my body, after, you know, you just feel so tired of crying at night, after you feel so tired of feeling that hurt feeling rejection feeling game shame feeling guilt living that life and it gets tiring you begin to wonder is there something else after this god if you're really there you begin to just wonder like is there more to life like i'm tired of this depression and this party and like it doesn't it's starting not to fulfill me i'm starting to i don't know what else is there and god help me and so when the young man texted me uh, that was just kind of like a breaking point for me. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? You know, and so I still felt there was a soul tie. And I do believe in soul ties. When you have sex outside of marriage, you create a bond or a soul tie between you and another person. And so I still felt this pull. I didn't want to go down that road of again, uh, again of being hurt or in a situation. So I prayed and asked God, even though I don't think I prayed in months, but I prayed and asked God. I said, God, I need you to help me break this soul tie. If you help me break it. You know, I, I, I just want to be free. If you help me break it, God, I won't text him anymore. God, I'll start praying more. God, if you help me be free from this depression of being rejected, if you help me be free from this right now, Lord God, I'll 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 begin to live for you. And that's a big promise in the moment because you know how you're praying to God like, Lord, please set me free. But you don't know the cost of it. God is going to come after you. And he came after me, y'all. After I said that prayer, now he let me go. My feelings began to like, um, kind of like simmer down. Like I, I didn't have those feelings anymore. I didn't have that desire anymore. And I did feel God begin to, now he's going to come collect. If you tell God, like God, I'll live for you. He like, oh, bet. 
like God is a, a, a father like he's that father like I'm going my hand is going to I'm going to come sit if you invite God in he's going to come sit beside you and so he began to come into my life and it felt so uncomfortable because I lived without God for such a long time it was like whoa and I, so I felt a drawback of myself like it was scary like God okay I feel you pulling on me to do the right thing to live right and so I hadn't had that in a while after that lifestyle so I kind of felt myself drawing back I didn't really want to be fully submerged and I didn't want to know what it was like to be fully submitted I wasn't quite ready to let go of that party lifestyle of like kind of being who I wanted to be doing what I wanted to do and so I was kind of like teeter tottering with God at the time so I moved on from this guy but I was also still having hurt and rejection you know with different things and so I was praying and everything but I didn't like I said fully step into that relationship with God and so there was another young man I went to high school with and so I began to kind of um try to replace that try to have like this boyfriend relationship but it wasn't even really a relationship it was kind of a situation ship if I'm being honest if I'm being truly honest because once you open up the door for sex as a young person outside of marriage they, there develops a craving for sex and yes the soul tie was broken but I still had that craving and I still wasn't purifying myself I still wasn't praying I still wasn't fighting temptation there were things that I would indulge in like you know opening that door was sometimes watching pornography because there's there's that lust there's that lust factor that you have to feel you know feel that void and so I just fell into a relationship with this guy that I didn't even like I didn't wasn't expecting a, a relationship or boyfriend relationship out of but I just kind of wanted that like intimacy I kind of want crave that sexual nature and so I just began having sex with this person at the time I'm working I was starting my first job I think this was a little bit before I started my first job or I was like literally maybe working there for a month so I'm working at Kroger at this time and I was also in college I had made it into college and so um, I felt like working was still being good and I would still go to church sometimes I'm working and in school but I was still living in sin. I would, you know, still go to parties from time to time. I was trying to step out of that lifestyle, but it was really, really hard for me. And so I remember after, you know, we had been intimate um, the next day, I got home and I broke down crying. I said, something's wrong with me. Something's wrong with my body. The Holy Spirit. And I think he was still, God was still gracing me. And God kept telling me this, you better stop it. You better stop it. And I kept, every time I would go over to, to his house, every time I would drive over there, I would hear God tell me to stop it and to cut it off and to stop it and to give my life to him and to, you need to come to me. You need to let this go. And so I didn't. And I broke down the next day and the Holy Spirit told me I knew something was wrong with my body. I felt heavy. I felt a pull. And so I was experiencing things. And I'm sorry, guys, if this is TMI, but with my uh, physical parts, you know, I was experiencing things that I hadn't experienced symptoms and everything and different things. So I go to my doctor, my OB doctor. And I mean, like, if I'm just putting it all out there, I just was experiencing certain things that were consistent with the STD, like maybe burning or itching or different colors. And sorry, but, you know, this is just me seeing something that I've never seen. And so my OB, who's been doing doctoring for years, she said to me, I remember, I will never forget the moment she said, Monet, I've been doing this, do, Monet, I've been doing this for 20 years. And she said this looks like a case of herpes and so my heart dropped my heart stopped I didn't know what to think I text the guy and I tell him like well this is what she's saying and she said I've seen cases like this and every time it's been like this it's been herpes I've been doing this for 20 years I can almost guarantee that it's that my life stopped I cried the whole day I was depressed um, I found out on a Friday I felt like my life was over I I couldn't even drink. I couldn't even smoke. Nothing I did could take the fact away from me that now I have a disease that my OB told me there is no cure for it. You can only take medicine for it. It will flare up sometimes, but you'll have it throughout the course of your life. And so this was life changing news for me. I began to think of dying. How will I tell if will I even have a husband? 
How will I tell my future husband? How will I even ha be able to have a normal relationship? And I begin to just see myself deteriorating. And that was rock bottom for me. And was it 2014 or I can't be, I don't remember if it was 2015 um, of April. I just know that that was rock bottom for me. And I said, God, if you are real, I said, I'll give my life to you, Lord. I'll live for you, Lord. I said, this time I mean it, God, if you heal me, if you take this away from me, Lord, I will live for you. I will tell people about you. I will tell people what you did for me. God, I know she's saying this incurable, but I know that you also perform miracles. I, I know what I read about in the Bible, but I want to see you do it for me. I, God, I, I need to know that you're there. I'll live for you. I'll confess you. I'll tell everybody what you did if you do it for me. And so that was on a Friday. I fasted on Friday. I fasted on Saturday. I told, I ended up telling my sisters because it was a lot of pain to deal with. It was this heavy burden and it was just so, that was life changing news for me and so I told my sisters and they were supportive and so I fasted the whole weekend I sought God like I hadn't sought God in a whole year I I said God I'll put down this life for you I said God I'll live for you I said God I will shout this from the mountaintops I believe and I be began to confess that I was already healed and so I went to work it was hard to work it was hard to eat anything I was like my fingers were cold all day. I remember like I couldn't concentrate at work. I was me making mistakes at work. I'm just waiting on this calling. So and I get a call from my OB and she said that Monet, I don't know what happened. She said, we're not seeing anything. She said, it looks like you have a minor infection and you're very lucky. She said, I've been doing this for years. I've never seen this. And so I said, thank you, God. And I went to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom in Kroger. And I literally, I, I thank God. I screamed and I shouted. And I let that relationship go with that young man uh, shortly after. And it was still a struggle to live for God. Like in the months to come, it's going to be the level of sin that you walked in. is going to take a greater level of walking in God to get out of it. And so... It was, it was hard getting out of that lifestyle, but at that moment, I put that relationship down with that young man. I did not have sex with him. I, I, I wasn't talking to anybody. So this was in April. I wasn't have, I vowed to never ha not have sex um, before marriage. If the next time I would have sex, I told God it would be my husband. And so I'm so grateful for that, y'all. How God was still gracing me. How God literally healed me from an incurable STD. And that's, y'all. <laughs> Like, I'm getting emotional. And I knew that God had to be real. This was no mistake. This does not happen. This does not happen. I said, there has to be a God in heaven for this to happen. And I praise his name. And I know that he heard me. And so I began to grow close with God in that following month. And so I met another young man. Well, not met, but I had also went to school or I known this young man and we had mutual friends and I began to date him. And God has such a pull on my life from the moment I told him I would serve him. Now he said, OK, I got her. Now he said, OK, give me your heart. And so I began to give him my heart. And so I didn't even have sex with the, the young man I was actually in a relationship with. And I cut it off like after maybe a month or less because I heard God telling me to do it and that this wasn't my husband. This wasn't the one. And so God has such a strong pull on my life at that time. And so I was willing to do anything because he had saved me. He had graced me. And so me dating this young man, he was into marijuana. And he was into weed. And so I ended up um, that one weekend I ended up, you know, I was occasionally I was like I said still trying to let that lifestyle go but God had a pull on my life and so that weekend I had got a, um, a weed edible and so I had ended up eating almost all of it I had the most ex scariest experience of my life and the young man couldn't even help me because he would we were both high and so I, I heard the Holy Spirit saying this isn't your husband this he's not he he can't cover you I don't this is not the life I have for you daughter and so I remember I, I that was the, I blacked out like that's how high I was I was at the mall and 
I couldn't see anymore. I started to lose my vision and all I saw was black and I just know that I was running around the mall, running around Fair Lane parking lot like I was high as heck and I just know that the security guards were chasing me and I was so scared. I was seeing hallucinations and I had to be rushed to the hospital and after that I, I cut that young man off and because I knew he wasn't my husband and if God was telling me to do it God you grace me and I was also praying to God God if you get me through this I won't even date God yeah I'm giving you my life but I'm going to give you everything down to who I date and so I, I began to just I, I let that relationship go and I said God you pick who I date now I can't God I can't even do I knew that God had allowed that experience for me to fully fully submit like we say, we're going to submit, but are you going to submit your relationship? Are you going to submit who you're dating, your finance, your time, what you spend everything on? Are you going to give your life to God? And so I knew at that point that was him asking for everything, even my dating life. And so after that experience, and I was asking God, please, Lord, I, need, I, I felt like I had lost my mind that night. I couldn't see. And I just know that hours later I came to and my mom was at the hospital and she was upset. <laughs> But I thank God for even bringing me through that, that I didn't lose my mind through the partying, through the drinking and trying to step out of that and this scary experience. And he gave me my mind back, my sight back, my vision back. And so after that, I think it was like I cut that short relationship off. That wasn't who I was supposed to be with. And it was it wouldn't influence me in the way that I was trying to go. The lifestyle I was trying to live, trying to stop smoking and drinking and, you know, especially the the weed and everything that had just happened I was like okay God I know that this is not what you have for me you show me I, I went on a fast I, I wrote everything down on this list um, I talked about this before I met my husband I wrote everything down on this list that I wanted to see God do God I want to grow close to you that was on my list I want to walk with you like I never walked with you before I want to be free God if you have a husband for me you show him whether it's you know t this year or whether it's 10 years from now I wanted you him to direct everything in my life there were some things I was expecting to be free from and so I fasted I think it was about a month and I ended up um, talking to my husband he was on the job that I was at and I, I knew that the Holy Spirit had told me he was he was the one but I, I still was healing from some certain things and so even though I saw my husband I didn't go after him immediately because there were still some things that I needed to be healed like walking with God beginning to know my worth beginning to let go of the hurt rejections and notions of who I should be who I was, what I had did in my past. There were so many things I was trying to get right. And so I didn't pursue that relationship with my husband right off. Um, when he started pursuing me, I was still on this path of trying to heal, trying to let go of baggage, trying to live solely for God. So during that time, I began to grow close to God. I remember fasting, reading the word, and God began to heal those traumas. And I know it sounds crazy, but literally once you begin to spend time with God and know who he is know who in his word he begins to heal your heart he began to lead me and direct me I begin to have different desires for my life I didn't desire to party anymore I didn't desire to drink or smoke you know anymore I began to have fulfillment it's crazy in God like how I felt high off the weed and the pills and drinking, I began to feel that with God. When I would worship, I began to feel this, this, the presence of God is something so unexplainable. When I would pray, he would answer me. I would ask him for little prayers, like certain things that I needed that week, you know, and he would answer in the form of somebody else at my college or in the form of somebody at my church. And I'm just like, God, I'm experiencing you on a whole different level. And after he healed me, an STD that they say is incurable. And I said, I knew that from then on, God had a grip on my life. And ever since then, y'all, I've, you know, been living for God. There are still some things that, yes, we work out. I'm not perfect in my own salvation. Every day, I'm striving to be more and more like God. But this is where I am now. And it's because I gave my life to him. So I just want to encourage you, <laughs> if you are... Um, a young woman living that life or maybe struggling to come with God maybe it's hard for you maybe you've been doing this for so long that it's hard for you to let go of that life maybe you're having a hard time believing that there is a God I just want to beg you to try him say a simple prayer and ask God to come into your life 
say, God, you know, I, you repent of your sins. God, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. And ask him to come in your life and be your Lord and Savior. And that's what I did. And I just said, you know, I said the prayer. Even though I grew up in church, I began to really ask God to come into my life. I confess you as Lord and Savior and Lord and Savior of my life. Lord, I need you. I begin to invite him into my life and he be he and trust and believe he has no no problem with coming and sitting down and changing your life no matter who you are, no matter how far you've gone, no matter what you've done. Trust me. He can heal you, he can change you, and you can be a totally different person like if my life isn't a testimony enough. And y'all, this is only a portion of it, but I thank God that I'm here to sit down and share this with you. That I'm here to say that now I am pursuing purpose. Now I am healed from a lot of stuff. Now I don't do this. And it's not, it doesn't make me better or anything. I'm set free from something that I struggled with and thought that I could not be free from. I've been healed from a disease that people never get healed from. So that's my story and that's my testimony and over time y'all God began to heal my heart and my body my soul he restored everything that I lost in the time that I was living in the world in the time that I you know was one foot in one foot out and everything and so that's my story and my testimony I know a lot of people see me now as a young wife and as a young mother living for God and I'm not a finished I'm not a finished product yet I'm I'm still yet to go where God has me to go but I am now on the path that he has for my life yes I'm healed and I'm healed and delivered yes I'm set free and it feels so good to say that so I just want to encourage you if you're struggling that to give God a chance I want to say yes he can change your life no matter what you've done yes he still loves you he still pr he proved that to me over and over and time and time again when I was not even y'all thinking about God or trying to think trying to live for him sinning doing every x y and z he still showed that he loved me so I want to say that God loves you no matter where you are right now how depressed you are how angry you are how used you feel how ugly you feel how worthless you feel God thinks you are so valuable to come and pull you from right where you are he pulled me from right, right where I was in the midst of my sin, in the midst of denying God, in the midst of not allowing him to have his way, in the midst of sinning, in the midst of just feeling like I was a terrible person. He pulled, He thought that I was valuable enough to pull me from that. And Jesus thought you were valuable enough to die on the cross for you because he loves you so, so much. Even where you are, you're not too far gone. So that's my testimony. I hope that somebody views this and is inspired or somebody views this and you want to know God and I pray that you get to know God if you are on the other end of this hoping that there is a way out thinking if there is a way out so I hope this helped you <laughs> if you um like this video or make sure you give it a thumbs up or make sure you share it with somebody that may need to hear it um, I love y'all so much. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Also, make sure you hit your bell notification. And thank y'all so much for watching. I will see y'all next week. Bye.